Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and welcome to part one of a three-part series called The Dung Beetles. Let's get started. This is a Rogue VB100. I'm, I'm not going to do the accent the whole video. This is a Rogue VB100, one of the cheapest Beetle Base offerings out there, coming in at $220 a brand new. Featuring an all maple construction with uh, some sort of rosewoodish neck. I don't know exactly what this is, it's not really listed anywhere. This is a very cheap base overall, honestly, in terms of its construction. We have 22 frets available on this 30.5 inch scale neck. I think they say it's 31 inch scale, but I measured it and it's it's 30 and a half. So that, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, so 22 frets though, you really don't have a lot of upper fret access with this body shape. Hofner also has the club style base, I believe. It's more of like a Les Pauly kind of look and uh, that gives you a bit more upper fret access, but you're really not playing these bases for the upper registers. <laughs> the nut width here is around 38 millimeters, which is on the skinnier side. It's more like, you know, akin to a jazz bass or something. For controls, we have Hofner-esque controls with two volume controls, one for each pickup, and then the three switches, one for a bass cut, one for a treble cut, and one for a, a volume cut. We'll go over all those in more detail when we play the bass. The bridge is also an atrocious design. It's barely attached to the body. So if you're restringing this base and perhaps maybe cleaning the fretboard that came covered in crust and absolute nastiness, uh, like this one did, <laughs> you probably want to make sure you know exactly where it is because it is going to fall off on you. This one did like immediately. I was able to reposition it though, no problem, but Definitely not securely fastened on there. I don't know about other violin basses or viola basses. I'm not really a fan of the style of bass, but we're gonna test them nonetheless. And one other thing to note, I have restrung this instrument with the Labella Beetle Bass strings. The ones that go to like, uh, that have the 96 gauge E string, not the 100 gauge. Uh, really nice strings and they can absolutely transform an absolute heard of an instrument. I'm just gonna say it straight up, this is not a great bass, but these strings can definitely transform it and make it usable, especially in some sort of beetle cover band setting. But before we listen to how it sounds, let's go ahead and turn this instrument around real quick. Around back, we can see the lightly flamed maple underneath this sunburst here. And moving up the neck, we can see that the neck is finished as well. Not a lot to see. This is a passive instrument. There's no rear control cavities, which means that if you're doing any work on the electronics, that's going to be a pain. Kind of a downside of one of these instruments, honestly. Uh, one thing that I like about the Michael Tobias designed uh, Lakeland hollow body, the original 34 inch scale, is that you have a rear control cavity to be able to access the electronics, but something like this you don't. However, everything is on a plate, so you can just take the plate out and work on it there. Which can't be said about some other hollow-ish style instruments. Not necessarily violin style, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, how much does the Rogue VB100 weigh? This particular example comes in at 5.8 pounds. I don't know what that is in metric. <laughs> but yes, 5.8 pounds, very lightweight. These instruments, however, are very neck divey. Uh, this one, neck dives just like they all do. It's because you have a very lightweight hollow body and a solid neck here. And in regards to price, these bases come in at around $220, $229 from Guitar Center or Musician's Friend. I believe Rogue is one of their in-house brands. Uh, yeah, uh, not the best way to spend that money, just off the bat. <laughs> You'll see why when we play it, but now let's go ahead and see how this bass sounds. You know what you need to do. Go ahead and push that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So I'm actually gonna do most of this review with a pick. So let's just get the finger style playing out of the way real quick. Not 
too bad, not too bad. But one particular aspect of this instrument that I'm going to just say out front is the fretwork is horrible. So below the 12th fret, you're fine. But when you start to venture above that, especially on the G string, listen to this. Yeah, it gets real squirrely up there. Real squirrely. I'm not even going to attempt to try to rectify this. I'm just gonna play it and it'll be gone. <laughs> now let's get the pick out and play it once more. Right now we have both pickups engaged 100% and then all three switches disengaged. So we have a treble cut, a bass cut, and then a volume, uh, I guess in this position, a volume boost. So essentially at rhythm, you're at 70% volume, and then solo, you're at 100% volume. So it's a perceived boost when you go over to solo mode. We're gonna keep everything in solo just because, why not? We'll mess with everything else though in just a sec. So first, here's both pickups with the treble and bass cuts disabled. So essentially tone at 100%. on that but I'm getting better. Next let's engage the first switch here which is the treble on switch. It's currently on as well as the bass one so we have the full tonal spectrum here. When I turn off the treble it sounds like this. There's a little bit of treble loss though it's hard to tell with these flats. So I'm gonna leave these settings as is. Uh, we just have the bass on right now. And I'm gonna play the, a longer riff. Here we go. Next, let's flip these switches the other way around. So we are going to have the bass off and the treble on. <laughs> so that was with both pickups engaged. Let's solo the neck pickup now and do it all again. So both treble and bass are on right now. Neck pickup. Do the treble cut first, the first switch.
and let's do the uh, base cut now. So it looks like the base cut actually disengages the neck pickup as well. Very interesting. I wonder if the treble cut also disengages the bridge pickup. So here is the bridge pickup with the base cut. And let's see what happens when we do the treble cut on the bridge pickup. Oh, it cuts the signal. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, turn both pickups back up all the way and we'll slap it. Why not? We're gonna slap this piece of crap. Not a slapper, not a slapper. Also the action on this is pretty high. I've already adjusted the truss rod and gotten the bridge as low as it could go without things getting all bottomy outy. Uh, and <laughs> these high frets up here are just like killing me. So yeah, this thing is, is a turd. <laughs> now I'll grab my pick one more time. Let's throw some drums behind this bass. So here are my final thoughts on the Rogue VB100. Save your money. Don't buy it. Don't. <laughs> These are bad. These are, are very bad. You can get a much better base for the same money or less, and we will be doing a part two of the Dung Beetle series, reviewing that instrument before putting both of them head to head. But yeah, the build quality is pretty bad. The hardware is bad. The balance is bad. The sound, not bad. The sound is okay. These pickups aren't the worst sounding pickups of all time. And I think in regards to the whole beetle bass genre, this definitely sounds the part, especially with the Labella flats. So the sound isn't bad, but the feel, the playability, the construction just leaves you wanting more for your $220. Uh, mine, like, it needed a lot of TLC to get it to where it is right now, and it still needs more that I'm not going to give it. But, yeah, that's what this Rogue is all about, so I would definitely avoid this base. What am I gonna rate the Rogue VB100? I'm gonna rate this base... Two claws out of five. It's 220 bucks, so you gotta really manage your expectations, but there are better instruments out there for the price that have a similar vibe. Uh, it sounds okay. It sounds pretty typical of what you'd expect of something like this. It's not noisy. It plays not great. The setup and the whole neck and the high frets don't make for a good playing experience. And yeah, I'm not a fan of this bass. I would say save your money, look elsewhere, and uh, stay tuned for part two of the Dung Beetle series where we are gonna be looking at another cheap violin style bass that actually is a good value. So stay tuned for that coming in the near future.
Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Rogue VB100, King of the Dung Beetles. And as always, until we groove again.